Greetings YouTube and welcome to my next weapons build. This is a bit of a different thing because this is meeting a challenge that has been thrown down by, by Mike from Weapon Collector on YouTube to me. So he's tossed down the gauntlet and now it's my job to pick it up and make a weapon from scrap. So my goal here is to produce a weapon out of scrap. As much scrap as I have available to me and I'm trying to use actual scrap. So I have these pieces here, and this piece of channel stock is literal salvage. It cost me zero money, and it's a scrap from a previous project, so it's double scrap. These pieces here, which are currently in the, I don't know if I'm gonna use them stage or not, these are all leftovers from other projects. I cut these off of other things, and this was less left, left over, and I thought, you know, I might find a use for it someday, and today may be the day, I'm not sure. Um, and I'm gonna use this shaft, which is from my own stock. So this is just something I had kicking around. Um, I, had, I had no use for it at the, at the minute. And my current idea is to do something like this. Now I've made a spear out of a piece of angle stock and a, uh, an aluminum shaft. What I did is I had a piece that was equal distance. So this is asymmetric, this side shorter than this side. And the other piece I had with both sides were about that big. It was from a smaller scale bed. I think this is from a queen size. I think the one I used in the last one was from like a kid's full size bed or maybe even just a twin. But um, so I wanted it to be asymmetric. So my goal here is to use this, make this point more acute. So take some measurements, figure out where I want the point to actually be, and then recut from this to that point. Um, and do the same on that side. And then that's probably gonna stick it around there. And then I'm gonna see if I can put some kind of a point on it as well. Now, I haven't decided if this is going to be kind of a back spike thing or a front spike thing, because the weapon, it's a pole arm, it's omnidirectional. So it could go in either way. I also haven't decided which direction my fasteners are gonna go in, because they may go this way, and that would just attach the channel lock to the shaft, boom, boom, boom. Or do I go this way and use the fasteners here to also attach something between the shaft and this. So I would have something protruding from the front. Or, if you want to consider it, the back. I haven't decided which is going to be yet. Um, I'm still playing with it. So at the moment, what I'm going to do is get this out of the way, do some layout lines on this, see where I want that angle. Because at the moment, I think that's a five inch point. I think five inch. And I'm going to want it to be much more shallow, maybe all the way down to here. I'm not positive. Again, I have to play with some, some measurements. And if I can make this all work, I think that would be a pretty cool looking uh, weapon. I may have two points on it or just one point. I don't know which. Uh, we'll see. Uh, so it's going to be kind of a pole arm uh, slashing weapon uh, with, with some piercing or cutting because I am going to sharpen whatever is left of the straight edge that's above whatever point I put on it. Obviously, if there's nothing above the points, then there won't be any sharpening. Uh, but because with the way this, the way this will be set up, this will be very rigid for, for piercing because it's going to be you know, an L shape. So that's not going to cause us a problem. Even though I'm going to have a more acute point on it, it's still going to be very rigid. Even though this is some particularly thick steel, I think this is eighth inch, maybe a little less. Um, so this will still be great at thrusting. Um, it's just not going to be uh, uh, all that uh, dangerous as a chopping cutting device because this isn't great steel. So if I do sharpen the edge, it will do damage, but it's not going to be shaving sharp. There's no way I can get a, no way I can achieve that with this stuff. Um, even if I had the ability to harden metal at the moment, I don't. This is again, it's just very low grade steel because it was just for a bed frame. It was never meant for this. I am repurposing things. So I screwed this one up and I needed to scrap it. So I did, and, but I saved it because I thought I could reuse it. And now it is, here it is. So this is an example of some of the things that I did wrong 
that hopefully I can make right. So here we have the roughed in components. I've decided to go through with a 10 inch slope. I have no idea what that angle is. I just measured from here to here. 10 inches seemed good and that's what I cut into it. I have done nothing else to this other than slightly deburr it. These are roughed in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one here and one here. This one is topping out at the bottom of that cut and this one is bottoming out at the bottom of this. I will have to deburr this slightly and I very likely, uh, once I figure out what this angle is going to be and everything, I will probably take this corner off as well as this corner off just to clean it up a little, just to make it look a little nicer. So I'll want this corner and this corner to match each other. And I may just flip it over and do the same thing on this side. I mean, for consistency's sake, at the fact that I don't have to take any measurements, just draw a line, and make a cut. Um, so I have marked with a punch uh, holes in these two uh, for, hole, for drilling holes. And I'm going to assume that this is hardened steel because these came out of a tool. I think it was an edger with that. These, these came off of an edger. So I'm going to assume that the edger is hardened steel. So I'm going to drill that with my hardened steel bit, uh, two holes, one in each. And once I get that figured, once I get that done, then I will drill in this with a, uh, a more conventional bit because this is much softer. I do not use, need to use my special steel carbide bit. And the less wear and tear I put on it, the longer it lasts. Um, like I said, I've roughed out this. That needs some fine tuning. This is going to be sharp. That's just going to have a bevel on it. Uh, the top part just gives it a nice point. Uh, but the bottom will have an actual edge on it when I'm finished. And since this is hardened steel, uh, it'll actually have a decent edge on it when I'm finished. I mean, again, I'm not going for shave, shave and sharp, but this will be the hardest thing on this, and that's kind of what I want because this is where you'll be having impacts in this direction because you'll be swinging it uh, uh, at, at an opponent, also using this as a weapons catch, or even in between here as a weapons catch, trying to catch your enemy's weapon and control their movement slightly. Um, and these will act as spacers, for when I have the shaft in place, because these are the same thickness, the shaft will sit on top of these, and the whole thing will get sandwiched together with some fasteners. Now I am concerned slightly that I may need to put a fastener this way. Once I get this assembled, I'll decide, yeah, do I think that's true or not? And if it is, I'll put something there as well. Uh, and if that is just sticking out at the back like that, that's fine. Um, because that may give me more stability because only holding it in two places could potentially cause a torquing issue, I think. I'm not positive on that. I'll have to look at it once I get the whole thing assembled. So first thing is get my special carbide drill bit out for a quarter inch hole in each of these. Um, and then we'll use these to mark the, where I want the holes on this. Because it's a lot easier, in my opinion, to it is to match things together then do all your layout and try to have them fall into place afterwards. Uh, I don't have things like you know a milling machine and stuff so I cannot get that kind of accuracy. So if I found it's easier just to drill things as you go and make one thing match to the other. It makes my life simpler and my stress levels lower. Okay let's uh, start drilling holes. So I've run into a bit of a conundrum. To get this shaft to have its holes centered, going right through the middle, is going to put this not touching. So this, this, this will be touching that surface and this is, the, this is where the two teeth are going to go right here. But there's going to be a gap back here and I don't want a gap back here. So I am going to go with ahead with my drilling a hole here but I'm going to go with this, which is three quarter, three eighths, three eighths by 16. And that way I can go through and I can put a spacer on the inside like that. It may be a nut, maybe something else. I don't know, but something on the shaft that will fill that gap in so that there won't be any slop this way. Um, and that way I can also when I'm done, it'll be it'll look like this, and I can cut that off, and I can make a spike on the back. 
why not? You know, if I got the capability, might as well do it. So that's the next task I'm going to do is drill these two holes. Oh, sorry, those two holes, which are already marked. When I get those two holes drilled, drill a 3 8 inch hole perpendicular to them that way and then use that to mark this. And then I can marry the whole thing together. Yeah, that'll work. And again, this is out of my own stock. So again, it's it's scrap. It's If Mike's counting the stuff behind his shed as scrap, I'm counting that as scrap. So uh, take this apart, drill the holes. I'm going to have to get my V-block set up in here first because that'll make my drilling, drilling holes in uh, in this much easier because this will be sitting in a v-block uh, much easier to center it when it's in a v-block um, and then eventually I'll have to do all three holes while the v-block is set up so the two go in this way and the one go in that way and then I can take the v-block out so I can then drill the hole I need here that one's going to be the hardest one to set up because I'll have to bolt this together, put a marking shaft in there, put a punch in there so that the whole thing lines up and then drill it that, mark it that way and then drill it from this side. That's going to make my drilling a little more complicated but not impossible. Uh, just a slightly, slight uh, more complexity than I want to. It's always easier to drill on a flat, you know what I mean? The, because I'm going to have to drill it, it's gonna, regardless. A narrow flat's harder to drill at drill on than a, than a wide flat like this, but I'll make it work. So take this apart, drill these two holes, mark and drill the center for that one. Once I get the two holes, find the middle, and drill perpendicular to it with a three-eighths inch bit, and then mark this and drill that hole. And then that should be all the holes I need. I already put the chamfers on uh, the angles on there for aesthetics, and then. Uh, you have to rough this out, uh, and then I'll have to do the final sharpening on the two teeth as well as this. And again, I'm not going for razor sharp here. Those two teeth will be decently sharp when I'm finished. Alrighty, it's coming together. I have all the holes drilled in this, and I went to do my dry run so I could set this and set up the mark here that I need when I discovered that I don't have any quarter 20 bolts that are the right size. I do, however, have a piece of scrap quarter 20 rod. So I'm going to cut the piece of quarter 20, quarter 20 rod the length I need, and then I am going to make two of those, um, and that way I can assemble the whole thing, do a dry run, so I can make the mark for that last hole. And then that last hole will be the last thing I have to drill in the entire project. And then it's doing the rough grinding and then doing the fine grinding on the uh, fine sharpening on this one and these two because these already have the rough grinding done to them. Uh, so, yeah, it's always something, you know what I mean? It's always something. All holes are drilled. Those have been cut to the right length. Those are my two quarter 20 bolt or threaded rods that make it into bolts. And this is going to be uh, the back spike as well as the uh, spacer holder for the shaft. This whole thing's gonna go together. So now that I have all of that finished, now I need to rough in a chisel grind on these two sides. And I'm using a chisel grind because it's, it's, it's pretty much impossible to get a decent edge on the inside of a curve like that. So I'm going to do a chisel grind on the outside, I need to rough that in, and then I can start doing a fine tuning. Um, again, this end's all set, all the holes are drilled in the blade, as well as the shaft. So we are just at the final stage here, I think. The next time you'll see this, I will have the components ready, and then we'll do an assembly. So these are now complete. I've done the final honing on them to my satisfaction. Again, they're not shaving sharp, but that straight edge right there is quite nice. And these I put on this short side. I put a slightly sharper angle than on the longer side, because this is the leading edge. So I gave that one a, a shallower 
slightly better cutting edge. And again, it's not shaving sharp. This isn't great steel, but it's pretty damn dangerous. And it comes to a decent, if not pinpoint, because you don't want it too sharp. Because if it's too sharp, it's just going to bend over when you hit something. So I want there to have a little bit of strength there for penetration. So now we are at the, uh, as far as these are concerned, at the, the assembly stage. And now I have to put a point onto here. Um, and I just ground this up a little bit on my grinding wheel to see how much, how long it took on the grinding wheel. And it takes longer than it takes on my, uh, my angle grinder set up with the flap wheel in this orientation. And so I will get my power drill out and I will put this in the power drill and spin it and then use it on here to, uh, to put a nice point on it. Uh, not too sharp, but sharp enough. And uh, when that is finished, then we're in the assembly stage and then we're finished because all the components are complete. So that's good. So that's the last thing we ought to do and then we're finished. So here we have the final assembly. So we have the two teeth here and you see how I put the threaded rod with the spacer in between. So this is all solidly locked in. Both sides of this aren't going anywhere. Both sides of this are locked on here. And the whole thing is nice and tight. Um, comes up to a nice point. And these do stick quite nicely into wood, all three of them. I tried it on one of the beams I've got down here. Uh, so you've got two decent cutting edges, two decent points, and a very sharp point here. This is going to allow you a lot of options as far as attack. Obviously the main uh, weapon on this is going to be the thrust, but you also can swing it um, to try to damage uh, uh, someone through lighter armor, and if you have to go through something a little heavier, you've got this point here. This also allows you to make a hook if you want to catch something here and pull, um, and you have multiple spots where you can hopefully catch an enemy's shield or weapon with this head. Uh, both, which is, this would be very useful in combination with uh, an ally, because this is a this could help you control the the enemy while the ally is taking advantage of their inability to uh, act the way they want to in that moment, because you've got their weapon and or shield fouled with your pole arm. This isn't, it's almost a halberd. It's not quite a halberd. It's close to a halberd. Uh, so this, that's what, probably what I'm going to call this thing. I'm going to call it the, the scrap challenge uh, halberd. Um, so this will probably be going up a little earlier than I normally would. I have my weapon build in a queue and, and they just, the latest one gets put at the end of the queue and it goes up when it goes up. Um, but this one was given to me relatively recently, so it's going to be going up probably within a week or so, probably two weeks of when uh, this was completed, um, so that it gets up there in a somewhat timely manner. Next week's build is already up and uh, loaded, loaded on the on the channel. I wasn't sure if I'd have this thing done before I had to get uh, the next videos queued up for my uh, my channel. I always have my videos on my YouTube channel queued up usually 12 to 14 days ahead of time. I like having some breathing room in case I have computer uh, problems. That way I have some time to work around said computer problems. Alrighty, so this thing is finished. I'm quite happy with it. I think it came out very well and it was incredibly cost efficient because uh, some of these components, like these are scraps. This is literally salvage and a scrap. This is a scrap and the threaded rods are scraps from other projects and of course the nuts are just nuts kicking around my shop. So, and this was, uh, I believe salvaged completely. It might have been a dollar at a yard sale, I can't remember for sure, but it was salvaged, it, it was a scrap kicking around my shop. So this entire build cost me nothing at the time of construction. So that's awesome. And I, and I got these these nuts here at such a low cost, they are effectively free. I have an entire jar of these things. I mean, literally an, an entire jar of three eight sixteenths nuts. And I think I paid two bucks for that. So these are, these are a penny a piece, you know what I mean? So uh, good price on those. Can't get that in the store. Uh, go to yard sales and, and, and uh, estate sales folks. You'll get incredible good deals sometimes. Alrighty, so 
thank you for being here for this build. I hope you had a, a good time. I hope you'll be here for the next. Uh, check out my DVR page where I keep the permanent stills for my projects, um, which I'll be taking next. I have to take some stills for this video and for my uh, DVR page, as well as my Instagram, which you should also follow me because not only do I post the salvage I find and the deals I get at yard sales, but cute cat pics. And who doesn't love a cute cat pic? So, Thanks, folks, for being here. I'll see you next build.